bit and then go on, get on with your day, go to church, maybe dinner and a movie like nothing happened. What year is it? Some dumbass questions that bad. Sorry. <laughs> Hey guys, what's happening? Niat here with Film Comics Explained. And as requested, today we'll be exploring Nathan Christopher Charles Summers, also known as Cable, who, as a baby, terrified Apocalypse so much that he infected him with the techno-organic virus to keep his insane potential powers in check. While Nathan first appeared as a newborn infant in the Uncanny X-Men issue number 201, created by writer Chris Claremont and Rick Linardi, it wasn't until The New Mutants issue number 87 by Louise Simonson and Rob Liefeld that we got to see the adult warrior Cable. In this video, we're going to go through Cable's history and the amazing extent of his telepathic and telekinetic powers. When geneticist Mr. Sinister found that a union between X-Men Scott Summers and Jean Grey would produce a powerful mutant, one that could be used to defeat Apocalypse, he created a clone of Jean Grey named Madeline Pryor and arranged for her to meet Scott Summers. With the supposed recent death of Jean, Scott was drawn to Madeline because she resembled her. They eventually married and Madeline became pregnant with their son Nathan Christopher Charles Summers. Together, they raised the boy in Anchorage, Alaska, but when Jean Grey was discovered to be alive, Scott left Nathan and Madeline to reunite with Jean and the other founding members of the X-Men, forming a new team called X-Factor. Mr. Sinister would use the opportunity to send his marauders to capture Nathan and kill Madeline before she could be exposed as a clone. And while Madeline survived and came into the care of the X-Men, Mr. Sinister took Nathan to a secret lab hidden beneath an orphanage in Nebraska. There he experimented on the boy, Sinister was thorough and erased all existence of Nathan and Madeline, making Scott believe that Madeline had moved away with the baby. But the precognitive mutant destiny pointed Scott to the orphanage, where he and Jean attempted to retrieve his son. Madeline Pryor was then captured by Mr. Sinister, who revealed her true origins to her, causing Madeline to go insane. After becoming aware of her latent telekinetic and telepathic abilities, she became the Goblin Queen and kidnapped her son, hoping to use him to keep a portal between Earth and the demon-infested dimension of Limbo open. Luckily, thanks to the combined efforts of the X-Men and X-Factor, Nathan was rescued and cared for by Scott and Jean as his mutant powers began to manifest. Unfortunately, soon after his rescue, the boy was infected with the techno-organic virus by Apocalypse. As the virus spread through Nathan, threatening to turn him into a body of liquid metal and organic steel, a member of the Ascani clan appeared to Cyclops from 2,000 years into the future. The clan explained they would cure him of the virus and that Nathan would become a savior in their time. And so, out of desperation, Cyclops agreed for Nathan to be taken 2,000 years into an alternate future ruled by Apocalypse. There, Nathan was given to Mother Ascani, a time-displaced version of his sister, Rachel Summers. Mother Ascani placed Nathan into an incubation crib to preserve his life and created a clone of Nathan, believing he would not survive the techno-organic virus consuming him. However, not only did both of them survive, but the clone was captured by Apocalypse and raised to become the madman known as Strife, as well as a vessel the next time Apocalypse needed a new host body. get on with your day, go to church, maybe dinner and a movie like nothing happened. Nathan Summers has been stated to be an alpha level mutant that has the potential to reach a mega level, and over the years he's developed a ridiculous number of powers and abilities, making him a time-traveling demon not to be trifled with. 
Much like his mother, Cable has insane telepathic and telekinetic powers, including the ability to create realistic telepathic illusions and cause people to experience events that are not real, a telepathic cloak that enabled him to mask his presence from others. He has the power of inorganic disintegration, essentially the ability to disintegrate objects by dissolving their atomic and molecular bonds. For some perspective, when he was freed of the virus and was able to use the full force of his power, he disintegrated the Silver Surfer's board, which is made of cosmic energy. He can create destructive psionic spikes and erect force fields. He has the ability to project his telekinetic energies as powerful concussive blasts that can turn buildings into rubble. He's used his telekinesis to alter his physical stature to that of a towering giant, much like Apocalypse. And over time, Cable has mastered mind link, control, trap, possession, and alteration, giving him ultimate control of the minds and bodies of virtually anyone. He's also developed mind transferal and the ability to astral project. This means that he can transfer his mind and powers into another body if on the verge of death, curiously one of the same powers as Apocalypse, or travel to his own plane of existence where nobody can reach him. He can sense the presence of another superhuman or mutant by perceiving the distinctive mental radiations emitted by them. And with his mastery of psychonesis, Nathan was seen controlling objects of significant size with his mind. His intuitive aptitude enables Cable to disassemble and assemble complex devices quickly. This awareness extends to objects as small as individual electrons. And not only could he sense and understand matter, but he could also manipulate it. He essentially has the ability to alter molecular and subatomic structures. For example, he could change food into poison, turn iron into pure gold, or rearrange oxygen molecules in a person's lungs to cause asphyxiation. Over time, Nathan eventually learned from Amelia Vought that through his use of telekinesis to manipulate the virus swimming through his biology, he can also manipulate foreign techno-organic substances to a similar degree, referred to as techno-active manipulation. He has telekinetic healing and has regenerated himself and healed others of malignancies or damage at an accelerated rate. Not only can Nathan focus his telekinesis to levitate himself and fly for extended periods, but he can also body slide and teleport to virtually any point in time and space. Of course, due to the techno-organic virus, Cable must constantly sacrifice a significant portion of his powers to stop it from spreading. Because of this, he used a technological link to the infonet, which acted as a surrogate for his telepathy. Instead of reading minds as a cyberpath, he was able to read digital information and broadcasts. He also displayed the ability to forcefully link other minds to the infonet, thus enabling him to read their minds electronically. So it goes without saying that much of Cable's body has been altered by the techno-organic virus, taking the form of cybernetics and bionics primarily on his left side. As a consequence of his telekinetic guidance and his ability to control his own physical composition, Cable's entire body has been heavily fortified down to the cellular level. This has granted him superhuman strength, durability, agility, dexterity and speed, and his entire skeletal structure has been replaced by porous, marrow-filled, organic metalloid bone replacements that don't interfere with the creation of red blood cells. His central nervous system has also been augmented by chemical and biocomputer enhancements, increasing his reaction time. Among his many cybernetic functions include his eye, which permits Cable to see the deployment of psionic energies and to perceive deep into the electromagnetic spectrum. His left arm is completely mechanical and capable of curling many tons. On the other hand, the right arm has less cybernetic infection, and while it can't lift as much, it still has the ability to produce powerful blasts of energy. Through a combination of his telekinetic abilities and his power to rearrange the atomic structures of matter, Cable is able to rapidly repair any damaged components within his body and rapidly redesign and improve his cybernetic and bionic components. On-the-spot improvisation has enabled him to create a variety of microcomputers in his totally mechanized left arm that do everything from allow him to physically interface with exterior computers, uplink, download to computers across the world, and even permit cellular communications and high-speed wireless internet access. Yes, that's right, my boy is an ultra-powered telekinetic router. But it should be noted that not only is Cable tremendously powerful, but years of experience and education received in the future from the Ascani clan have tempered him into a master combatant, an expert tactic that has led both the X-Men and X-Force in numerous successful campaigns. It works best when you pull the trigger. That gun is amazing.
In the future Earth ruled by Apocalypse and his Canaanite army, the clan Ascani worshipped Nathan as the prophesied dayspring and the Ascani son. When she was badly wounded, Mother Ascani brought Scott and Jean into the future to protect Nathan. As their own bodies could not have survived the time travel, Jean and Scott inhabited new bodies, cloned from their descendants. Much time had passed since they'd last seen Nathan as a child. At this point in their lives, they were married and had learned that Cable was Nathan's future self and had begun to mend their relationship with him. Under the aliases of Red and Slim Dayspring, Jean and Scott raised Nathan together while Rachel was lying in a coma, held alive by machines. They never actually told Nathan of their true origins, or his, and never stayed in one place for too long. Their plan was to begin training Nathan so that he would become Cable and eventually fulfill his destiny by overthrowing Apocalypse. Red taught Nathan to use his telekinetic abilities to hold the effects of the virus back and to telepathically mask its presence. At eight years old, Nathan met Strife during a clan rebellion raid on Apocalypse's citadel in Crest Coast. Though surprised by their resemblance, Strife was ultimately defeated by Nathan. After years of remission, Nathan's techno-organic virus suddenly began to flare up and he went into a coma. Although his condition was deemed terminal, Slim and Red watched over Nathan day and night. Appearing as a young Rachel Summers, Mother Ascani telepathically formally introduced herself to Nathan and explained to him that he was potentially the most powerful mutant ever. She also told him that if he sacrificed the maximum use of his telekinesis daily, he would be able to contain the virus indefinitely. When the day came for Apocalypse to use Strife as his new host body, Red Slim and Nathan were there to stop him. Apocalypse was able to see through their physical bodies and recognize them as his ancient adversaries, Cable, Jean Grey, and Cyclops. After Nathan, Red, and Slim attacked Apocalypse, Nathan disrupted the telepathic link between Apocalypse and Strife, seemingly killing Apocalypse. Unfortunately, at that moment, Mother Ascani began to die, and Red disappeared. Slim realized that he too would be sent back to his time, forced to abandon his son once more. Wanting to say so much, he could only promise Nathan that he would never be alone. Look, family is not an F word, all right? There's one out there for you. <clears throat> Just keep looking, okay? It should be noted, though, that the extent of Cable's wide array of telepathic and telekinetic abilities have varied dramatically throughout his appearances. He would later return to the present-day era, initially arriving some years before his own birth. Since making his home in the modern day, he's worked alongside the X-Men, including Cyclops and Jean Grey, and reformed the New Mutants group into the original X-Force. He had frequent battles against the near-invincible assassin Deadpool, who later became an on-again, off-again ally for some years. He's fought against Strife's Mutant Liberation Front, attempted to kill Apocalypse a number of times, and nearly succeeded. He lost and regained his abilities again when he was de-aged during House of M. He fought to protect Hope Summers at all costs. And at the end of the Avengers x Sanction storyline, Hope actually cured Cable of the Techno-Organic Virus using the Phoenix Force. Of course, he eventually was infected with the Techno-Organic Virus again. I mean, not only is he OP without it, but it ultimately enabled his character to return to the status quo of wanting to kill Apocalypse and cure himself. Regardless of the storyline he's in and which version of Cable we're working with, one thing is clear. He's an unrelenting fighter with indomitable will that won't stop until the mission is ended. But with that said, that's all for today, folks. A huge thanks to everyone that requested we cover Cable. As always, it's been a pleasure. Niat here with Film Comics Explained. Thanks for stopping by. Can I have one of those guns? No.